All right, here are 10 questions on limits. See how you go. The first one you find the limit as x goes towards 3 of 2x squared minus 3x plus 2. Now, all we need to do now is, because there's no restrictions on the 3, um, we just sub simply substitute 3 in for x to determine the limit. So that will give us um, 2, and so 3 squared minus 3, 3 plus 2, and that gives you the result of 11. Okay, let's pause the video and have a go at the next one, number 2. Now again, that's the same thing, just substitute in minus 1, and you're going to get minus 1 cubed minus uh, 3 times minus 1. Now I'll just rub that out to keep it unclear there. That's minus 3, 3 outside of minus 1 plus 5 which gives me a total of 7. Now, the next one's a bit different. Okay, so you went with this one. Now, that's the limit as x tends towards 1. We can't put the 1 in directly, so we have to factorise the numerator. So it becomes x minus 1, x plus 1 over x minus 1. Right, the, these guys go out because x is not equal to 1, it's approaching 1. And putting the 1 in, we get the result 1 plus 1 of 2. All right, now in the question 4, you, you might get tricked by this one because you say, oh dear, I mean, those, this x plus 1 won't cancel. But it doesn't matter because basically uh, there's no restrictions again because putting 1 in here, you'll get 2 in the uh, denominator, which is not zero, so you just it's a fairly simple one, just substitute the values in, and we're going to get now that uh, this is equal to uh, putting the one in here, we're going to get minus one times one plus three is four over two, and the result is negative two. Right now, in uh, question five, I'll just pause that and have a go at it. All right, now you should have had, this time you notice that you'll get a zero in the denominator, so you need to factorize the top. And just a fairly straightforward factorization, that becomes x minus three times x plus two. Just check that's right by you know, mentally expanding that out. You don't want to make a mistake at this stage. And of course you notice then the uh, x plus two is will cancel conveniently, and you'll get the result when you put uh, the minus 2 in there of negative 5. All right, now have a go at number 6. All right, number 6. That's the limit. As x tends to negative 1. Now this is factoring by pairs, so we take out the x squared in the first pair. We get x plus 1. We take out the 2 in the second pair, and we get again x plus 1, all over x plus 1, which then further factorises to x minus 1 of x plus 2, outside of x squared plus 2, all over oh, x squared plus 1, sorry, over x plus 1. And now, of course, those x plus 1s will cancel. And putting the minus 1 in here, minus 1 squared is 1. And 1 plus 2 is equal to 3 as your limit. All right, question 7. Let's find the limit as 2 over x minus 3. As x goes to the of 2 over x minus 3. Now, as we discussed before, the minus 3 will have no effect on this as x goes to infinity. So this, this obviously will go to 0 as your limit. Now, 
I'll pause. Have a go at question eight. All right, now you probably would have just done it the quick way and just ignored the two and the minus three and said it's one, but I'll, I'll take it through the, a little bit more formally and we'll divide numerator and denominator by x. Not a bad technique, as you'll see in the next group of exercises, this little, um, little method. And of course here, as x goes to infinity, this will go to zero, this will go to zero. So this will be one over one. So the answer is just one. Oops, one. That's pretty ugly, isn't it? Let's take it back. Well, one. All right, now in uh, question nine, we, we have to find the limit as x goes towards infinity of 2x minus 3 over x plus 4. Now, in this case here, we can again, we can do the same thing and just say ignore the minus 3 and the 4 and cancel x and say, OK, it's 2. But I'll just go through the more formal method. That's the limit as x goes towards infinity. Uh, dividing numerator by x, well, this becomes 2 minus 3 on x. So you can cut out that other little step and divide that by x, you get 1 plus 4 on x. And then you can see this will go to 0, this will go to 0. So it's just 2 on 1 or just 2. All right, now have a go at number 10. Pause the video. All right, now, in this case here, you, you may be tempted to actually factorise that. And you, but actually, well, if you do that, it will it'll reduce down to something like this. But it's not necessary because what you do, you, you, you take this, you divide numerator and denominator by x squared, whatever the leading power of this polynomial is, you divide by. So there we go. We'll have, and, it's, and this is why this technique is so, so sweet. Okay, here we go. Um, and you would have had, dividing this by x squared, you would have 2 minus, now x on x squared is 1 on x plus 1 on x squared all over and of course this is going to be dividing this by um, uh, x squared you're going to get 1 minus 1 on x squared now as x goes to infinity that'll go to 0 this will also go to 0 even faster and that goes to 0 so all these cancel out and you just get again the limit of 2 so you can see the advantage of this this technique no matter what this power was, you just, um, you just, whatever the leading power is, divide numerator and denominator by it.